Black Widow promo images offer a better look at the villain Taskmaster. That is a headline on this week's MBE Heroes. Yes, Stephen, this one is coming in from Screen Rant, and you are absolutely right. We have a whole array of new promo images for the up-and-coming Black Widow movie, and this is actually from a Marvel News Twitter account on, well, Twitter, funnily enough, who the for it, and it's in Spanish, so I can't Spanish even Twitter, read, yeah. I can't even read what it's saying, but it seems to say <coughs> photos promotion, the Black Widow, so yeah, but look, I digress, it's shown yeah. us the potential villain, Stephen, Taskmaster, yeah. now I can't even begin to lie that I knew who this character was, even 10 minutes ago, because I didn't, it looks like the equivalent of perhaps the DC um, crossbones, no, not crossbones, what's it called? Deathstroke. Deathstroke, yeah. Yeah, it looks like that. It's kind of a scut. It looks better than Deathstroke, though. He's got a metallic skull. Yeah. He's clutching a sword and a shield. He looks like the perfect sort of a antagonist for the Black Widow character. Natasha Romanoff, notoriously yeah. uh, athletic and uh, quite agile with her yeah. uh, martial arts moves and whatnot. This guy looks the perfect villain for her. What do you make of him, Stephen? Um, uh, or her? Because we don't actually no. have... Well, no one's casted yeah, no one's, right? And they're um, suggesting that it may be uh, one, someone that's been cast already. Whoever it, it may be, John, um, I'm actually surprised at this because I thought this was going to be more of a grounded film in terms of um, the casting and, and the, the, obviously the characters that are going to be appearing in this film. I didn't think... This looks very <clears throat> supernatural. I might be wrong. Just looking at the image, John. It strikes looks, me as like a bucky setup. I hope so. I hope it's yeah. more like that because that's more realistic. But just that, I'm, I'm talking about that first image. It looks. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, that's from very, the actual comic, isn't it? Looks very Masters of the Universe. Um, it hopefully, it's not like it's that. Um, and hopefully, it's more grounded, as you said, like Bucky John, the well, Winter Soldier. You do recall Stephen Red Skull on Voromir? Obviously, it wasn't Hugo Weaving, but no, no. he was a sort of a paranormal figure anyway. He was like a celestial. Red Skull, if you like, the Guardian of the Soul Stone. Yeah. So, yeah, that wouldn't really work either if it's like a living, breathing villain for, uh, obviously, Natasha Romanoff in this movie. But the, the thing I took from it, Stephen, first and foremost, <laughs> um, not actually the character itself, but just the concept that it could be one of her close confidants or friends that is established in the movie who turns evil and perhaps becomes the out-and-out -out antagonist. Yeah, I think we'll have many villains in this movie. Unless the David Harbour Red Guardian character is perhaps a friend of Natasha Romanoff who helps her out Could be, John. of this KGB um, organisation. I, I don't think it will be the KGB in the, the actual MCU, but if he's not a, a friend who's helped her out of this world and obviously set her free to go to the States and perhaps meet up with S.H.I.E.L.D. and whatnot, then maybe he will be the early villain in the movie, David Harbour. And then we'll have this character Taskmaster coming in I'd actually have to read up on the character. I don't know much about it other than it looks clearly yeah. melee heavy. It's not a character with well, innate abilities, God given, or, or John, celestial the, abilities. The, the article does say not much is known regarding the antagonist. That doesn't say yeah. that they're not actually saying that about this character, the Taskmaster. They're saying that he might not be the main antagonist. Yeah, in I the think movie. it'll be multiple. Um, multiple. I, and I, that's why I, I was agreeing with you, John, because I did pick up on that. Um, I'm like you, I, I don't know too much about this character at, Is he at even all. an antagonist at all? Uh, well, this, this is the thing, thing. You're, you're naturally assuming just because of the way he looks, or the way she looks, whoever it may be. And well, from be the bodies, the Stephen, but and I the, think, the comics he looks Yeah, smell. and I think as well, John, um, it, it's quite contradicting and it's quite confusing for um, your sort of layman fans of these uh, comic books. Mm -hmm. You're getting that image uh, that's in Twitter, on the Spanish Twitter one, where it he doesn't look too much of an antagonist there. It looks very yeah. much like the Winter Soldier sort of style of a of a character. But that, that you're getting that one obviously, um, you know, up at the top of the, the article that looks more supernatural to me. Mm. So it's very hard to to decide. Well, Stephen, just scraping the surface of the character, <clears throat> I've pre pretty much just read over it very very quickly. He is initially, I think, a member of Shield. Uh, he's, I think, initially a good guy. He finds out. I, know, I don't know what happens with him, but he injects himself with super soldier serum. And there then I think are. he then yeah. perhaps turns a little bit in the ferries. Yeah. Um, he uses stolen capital to establish a base of operations to train criminals uh, in his own academy. So he perhaps starts off as a good character within S.H.I.E.L.D. And as we do know, this movie will be taking place over 
multiple timelines. I think it starts perhaps yeah. in the 90s, yeah. then it's in between Civil War and I think um, Avengers. Um, Christ, I always forget that goddamn Avengers movie in between. Age of Ultron. Age of Ultron, yeah, yeah that's yeah. the one. Shocking. I always forget it. I like to cast that out of my mind. It was terrible. It was the black sheep of the Avengers movies. Yeah. But it's set in between those two, so it's going to be hopping all over the place. Uh, potentially, I may be completely wrong here. And he perhaps has scope to start off good and then turn bad. In terms of uh, what they're saying about me, six foot two and two hundred and twenty pounds. So I think that perhaps rules out a female uh, <laughs> portraying the character. Unless it's uh, yeah, uh, your woman from um, Game of Thrones, Gwendoline Christie. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, that would probably work. Um, pillars and abilities. They say he has artificially enhanced physiology, as you would imagine with the super soldier serum. I think that is what your man, uh, Chris Evans. Steve Rogers took in yeah. uh, Captain America, I may be wrong. I think he had serum. And he says he has photographic reflexes, limited superhuman speed, physical movement prediction, superhuman reflexes, and superhuman agility. He's also quite the martial artist as well, so he's a master tactician and assassin. So he's a real good uh, villain for Natasha Romanoff in this movie, if indeed he will play the villain. Well, it doesn't and I'm excited that. for That's that. The thing, John. It doesn't say it in the article. Uh, what, that it will be, yeah. Yeah, you know, and it's, it's just that little line about the antagonist that it's sort of latched on to the end of it. To make it look like that's what they're suggesting, but you read it carefully, it's not what they're suggesting at all. They're just saying the main antagonist hasn't been confirmed yet. Why would you throw that in then? You know, yeah. obviously. I think um, they're just speculating, Stephen. There's I not think, much known yeah, about the movie. There's yet. not much meat in the bones, John, but it's interesting to see the film's not that long away now. No. Um, we're only talking. A couple of months. Yeah, yeah. four or five Three, months yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, so it's not that long to go. We obviously know most of the cast that's been involved now uh, over production over the last year or so. I'm looking forward to it, John. It's going to be good to see this character's um, sort of kind of backstory. I would have loved to have seen a more Origins, if I'm being honest. Um, but I like the fact that they're going over some, um, you know, maybe two or three timelines. Um, yeah. Whether or not they'll be in sequence or they'll be in parallel throughout the film, which would be quite interesting. Um, who knows? Well, Stephen, I've just, the final thing I'll add, I've looked at the cast and the only chap out with Red, uh, Red Guardian or David Harbour who could perhaps portray who's been confirmed in the cast is maybe Oliver Richters or O.T. Fagbenley. Fagbenley, I can't see his name. They are the two candidates. But oh, it's Ray all, Winston in there. Ray Winston is in there. I don't think he could play a £220, six foot no. two uh, taskmaster. But look, it's very interesting. It's great to see more information about this movie coming out. Very lo much looking forward to it. I can't wait to see Natasha Romanoff getting her own independent story, fleshing out what she's been getting yeah. up to. And uh, not whoever's the antagonist I'll be on board to watch it regardless so yeah I've not got much more to add on that note and I think we shall move on to the yeah. second topic it's yeah. all about Martin Scorsese Stephen once again and we'll kind of bleed in some Jennifer Aniston goodness as well aka Rachel from Friends um, in there and it's all about obviously the Marvel movie criticism and this Screen Rant article has tried to offer some context to the comments he made Stephen last week over that not being cinema and they've did this by going through a series of, I think it's classes he does, um, yeah. master classes, yep. and they've picked out some words which will perhaps open up more of what he was getting at with his comments. They say, and these he says in these master classes that he believes you have to stay open to what's happening right in front of you, around you, at every single moment as you envision a scene, as you work on the scene with the crew and with the cast. Uh, and he says that it's almost that these movies are almost director free which I don't agree with, uh, and that they're like a succession of line readings in a sense. Good script, really good actors, but he doesn't feel it's cinema. So it doesn't jive with his vision of filmmaking, if you no. like. He feels like it's just turn up and do your job and then you go home and get a paycheck. No. And it's a theme park experience, whereas for him it's more nuanced. It's more nuanced in a sense. I can't really think of a better word than that. It just it's spontaneous, if you like. You can turn up and the lighting may be different, and that may change his view on how he's going to shoot a scene and how he's going to take the character's story. So he, in a sense, Stephen, as we said last week, is more human scale. He likes to look into the deep into the psyche of human beings and offer drama-driven stories. And he doesn't envisage or view this as being cinema, no. these big blockbuster releases. I didn't agree with the manner in his comments, but I can understand where yeah. he's getting at it. What is your thoughts on this perhaps nude, con John, nude it, context? It, I think probably um, it's just uh, one of these choice of words, yeah. Um, I think we obviously covered that ground last week when mm -hmm. we were talking about this news when it broke. Um, perhaps he used another genre. Um, he might have got away with it. 
but he's um, he's kind of picking away at a genre that's very popular at the moment. Um, perhaps if maybe he said rom coms, is not cinema. He might have went under the radar, but he didn't. He used a very popular um, genre at the moment, um, which has got a massive wide appeal. But I do get what he's saying. I do understand what he's saying as well. Um, you watch any Scorsese films, um, every line, every delivery leaves you hanging. Mm-hmm. You're always, you know, invested in the characters. Um, I'm always invested in, obviously, the MCU characters as well, too. Uh, um, pro- probably a lesser degree, but that's not what I get into those films for. I get into those films because it's an escapism. Yeah. You've got to remember the, where the origins of these um, comic books came from, the period in their history as well, um, during the, the war. They were made for um, you know kids to sort of take their minds off what was going around them in the real world. Um, wind forward 50, 60 years, John. We're now seeing them, you know, in, in the cinemas. Yeah, it's dark. Um, the world and, is dark. <coughs> yeah, there. and it's and people need escapism yeah. from the bleakness of uh, the world. And that's what they're for, you know. And yeah. um, obviously, for myself, um, I've always been a big fan of, um, you know, superheroes from television series from the nineteen seventies. Um, which I've mentioned before, Bill Bixby, um, Nicholas Hammond as well, um, doing his Spider-Man film, yeah. uh, television programmes, which were corny at the time, but um, I thoroughly enjoyed them. Um, and from then, I've always enjoyed them, but I've always taken them for what they are. Um, they're not supposed to be deep and meaningful. They will have some emotional impact on you, because sometimes you can relate to things that happen, these films that happen in your own life. Yeah. Um, and even things that don't happen in your own life, when we talked about this last week as well, John, Martin Scorsese films and stories are all compacted into a two, three hour film. These stories are spread over yeah. um, a longer time span. That's why I think a lot of people got emotional with um, Tony Stark. obviously Tony Stark's yeah. death. Um, you know, I think it was very well handled. I think Robert Downey Jr. should be up there and considered for uh, an Academy Award nomination um, for his Although performance. Although he doesn't want it. <laughs> yeah, they all say that. Yeah. Um, but I think um, it's just his opinion at the end of the day, who it's coming from. One of the um, you know biggest directors of our day, um, he's still knocking them out of the park. We're looking, all, we're all looking forward to the Irishman. Can't wait to see it. Don't think the guy's ever made a bad film. Even his um, music documentaries, yeah. uh, No Direction Home, uh, Shine a Light. And um, the George Harrison one, uh, uh, Living, Living in a Material, material world. world, yes. All well executed, covered at all the bases uh, for those uh, three legendary bands, performers. Um, so uh, it's really just a matter of opinion. I think probably his choice of words were probably misconstrued. Um, but that's just, that's the world we live in. You know, it doesn't, you know, sometimes you can say things, um, people take them the wrong way. I think what we said last week, and I think a lot of people have echoed it, well, not echoed our words, but obviously echoed the, the sentiment and what Mark Scorsese was saying, um, that it was just the way he said it. You know, it's probably just came out wrong. But again, John, it's it's to do with um, his era as well. Um, he's, you know, he's he's been in the business for the past, what, 50 years or so. Mm-hmm. So um, he's at that stage in his life where he probably doesn't care what people think anyway. Um, he doesn't really care for the genre, clearly. Um, but I don't think that's what he was meaning. No, Stephen, and I think most people have taken it the right way. Uh, yeah, they've taken the yeah. comments on board. There's not been much fury uh, thrown his way for Nick these fury, comments. Yeah. yeah, Nick Fury, well, he has flung some yeah. comments, but they were very well handled. They weren't yeah. that angry or I aggressive. Think most people know him. Yeah, they know, know, they know the way he's meaning, no Stephen. In it, John. Yeah, he's just given his blunt opinion on it. He is from a very different decade than the era of filmmaking, as you did say, Stephen. But what you always have different genres and different techniques of filmmaking not one is some are highly more highly regarded than others but you can have these coexist happily Uh, I can go and watch an Irishman a good fellas a taxi driver and be equally happy going and watching an MCU movie a Captain America or even a Captain Marvel although a lot of people didn't like that so much and we know why Uh, but Stephen the final words a couple of things I'll add in before we move on to the Jennifer Aniston a uh, brief little side mm-hmm. tangent, if you'd like, before we move swiftly onwards to another topic. Uh, the comment about the process of directors, all good directors, having this ability to maybe change things up in a movie, if and when they feel it's necessary, changing lighting or whatnot, and just how they're feeling. I think that's perhaps 
Un, it's, it's not quite fair on the MCU directors. You look at the amount of directors we've had, Taika Waititi, James Gunn, um, Josh Whedon, John Favreau, all very accomplished directors, even Ryan Coogler and the Russells. Yeah. These are all very accomplished guys who know their craft, and I think he's been a little bit harsh on them and what they've brought to these movies. It's not just a case of stepping in and it can be directorless and work. No. It's a very big process. We've seen the likes of Kevin Smith speaking about getting on the Star Wars set, and it's like a small country. Yeah. And you have to bring all of that together and um, make it weave. And that's an art form, think, a different art form. I think the art point form. has been missed about the genre as well, John. Comic books are... You can't get, you know, you can't get into a store and buy a comic book and expect to have... Um, you know the War of the Roses or whatever. You know, uh, you know the Bible or whatever. You're going to be, you know, reading this for ages. It's it's a quick fix. That's yeah. what comic books are. If you ever go into uh, any of the ones in Glasgow, um, and you pick up, you know, a, an issue, um, they're probably about that thin, you know, and um, you could probably go through it and understand the story within about five minutes. Um, just the way it's segmented, the way it's worded, and you move on and you enjoy it. That's and that's why well, the movies work. Yeah, exactly, yeah. John. And that's where the the source material was coming from. And you mentioned those directors as well. They are working with um, you know very talented writers. Um, they're also working you know in tangent with each other as well because much it, larger cast as exactly, well. Exactly, you know, the whole and, scale was massive. And, and they try to, as I said last week, they try to um, they try to appeal to a wide audience. Um, your audience being the original comic book geeks who be able to recite issues back to back and references that you'll see in the films but also a wider audience um, you know a general audience that I would regard you and I to yeah. be in um, you know that enjoy um, you know the story and, and obviously the, the, the journey that these characters are going on Stephen I just enjoy the lushness of the world and what has yeah. been mined over this period of the last 10, <clears throat> 12 years you have to get back 50, 60, 70, 80 years in some cases and it's magnificent what has been mined from, what was essentially, as you did allude to previously, graphic novels that were created for young generations who were also dealing with incredibly difficult times mm -hmm. within the Great Wars. Yeah, the Great War, not Great Wars. They weren't out, I think, in the, the, 10, the 1910s, mm -hmm. if you'd like. But Stephen, I'll move swiftly onwards to the Jennifer Aniston thing quickly yeah, okay. and get your thoughts on this. Jennifer <laughs> decided to throw some shade towards Marvel. Uh, now this is a quote, uh, and I'll get your thoughts briefly. Uh, I'm going to try and paraphrase it. Essentially, I, I'm not even read the quote. I'll, I'll paraphrase it. She said that she finds it hard to comprehend that the rom-com genre uh, as once it was in the 1990s, if you'd like, when she was in her pump and in, in her A game, if you'd like, is gone. There is no more Meg Ryan heavy movies, uh, and <laughs> she kind of blames Marvel films for coming into cinemas, eating up all the, the screenings or showings. And not enough people are then being allowed to go in and enjoy different genres. Do you yeah. agree with her? Is she right in criticising the, the MCU and Marvel films? It's Is this just the easy target? I see and do you want to see a new renaissance for Meg Ryan? I don't, no, not really. I don't <laughs> want to see a renaissance for rom-coms either, John. Um, I, I understand what she's saying, but um, you, you go back to that period uh, in time when um, the likes of um, Jennifer Aniston, um, your man... Matthew McConaughey was in a lot of rom-coms as well. Ryan Hugh Reynolds Grant. as well. Hugh Grant. Uh, Colin Leonardo Firth. DiCaprio. Uh, yeah. Um, there was that period, uh, the late 90s to the early 2000s, where they, they, were, they were just... Um, they did. You're right, John. But there was that period of time when these films could do no wrong, you know? And then, um, round about that time, Ben Affleck was playing Daredevil, and it was rubbish. Um, you go back further to the Nick 1990s. Nick Cage was playing Ghost Rider. Yeah, uh, that was... Uh, I could have done without that, but um, the fact of the matter is um, these films that she's referring to now are getting made better. Uh, they're better production, um, better writing involved, better directing, and dare I say it, um, there's obviously the, the pop cultural ref uh, references are in there as well, and, and the uh, sort of ex um, experiences and what people are into at the moment. Comic book films are at their peak at the moment, um, just as rom-coms were. This is the point I'm trying to make, John, that they all have so their cyclical. time, yeah. and at some point down the line, which I'm not looking forward to, rom-coms will come back in again. Um, there was also a stint of comedies that were very much, um, you know, that American Pie sort of humour. Um, <laughs> your man played Stifler, was in a series of these films. They all have their day and Double they all have their time. 
Yeah, Scott something. Scott. Oh, Can't remember his name. But um, the point I'm making is this is the era for comic book films and people like Jennifer Aniston and Meg Ryan who are, are going to just have to accept that. Um, I know that Jodie Foster obviously has had something to say in that as well. But again, mm, this is because it's affecting their, their work at the moment. Um, and it shouldn't really concern them. Um, either getting bored or... You know, I miss the train. Oh, look, Stephen, I'll say two things about Jennifer's comments. First of all, you're absolutely right, it's all cyclical. And she's totally forgetting all of the great things that these Marvel MCU movies, if you like, eh, have done. What they've done for different elements of society. The minor societies, like what Black Panther did for the black communities all over the world. It was a zeitgeist movie, it really empowered that society, showed them that, look, we can do this, we can become big stars and star in the movie, which is predominantly an all-black cast, obviously Martin Freeman and Andy Serkis aside. And then even Captain Marvel, much derided, but what that's done for young girls watching that, it showed that, look, we can be a superhero on the screen if we put our mind to it, anything's possible. So she's forgotten about that. They, they empower a lot of people. Yeah. And they are, do a monumental amount of good, uh, despite perhaps cleaning up at the theatres and not allowing other people to watch other movies, which is, again, <clears throat> absolute shit anyway, because people can go and watch anything they want. I actually agree with what Robert Meyer Burnett says, that it's, if anything, encouraging more people to go into theatres who wouldn't be inclined to go into a theatre. Yeah, yeah, maybe making that. them the cinephiles, if you like, and then they will go and appreciate different forms of movies. Whereas if they didn't have the MCU, they wouldn't be anywhere near a cinema. Final thing I'd add, you Quotes a couple of movies, Tears of Endearment, uh, Terms of Endearment, Jesus Christ, um, you know, Heaven Can Wait. Then she goes on to mention Young Frankenstein, Blazing Saddles. Classics. They are absolute classics, the Mel Brooks movies, and. But they had a day, they, they would never be made in this day and age, ever. No. In this politically correct society, they would be castrated in this day and age, so I don't know why she flung them in. No matter whether there was MCU movies or not, they would never see the light of day in the 21st century. So I'll leave it on that note and I'll move swiftly on to the next topic because yeah, we are running I out of time. I think it will have to be swift, John. And I think we've lost the Gwyneth Paltrow topic, Stephen, yeah, I think on we'll, that note. So yeah, we will I swiftly we will. talk about the MCU's X-Men <clears throat> uh, being potentially failed Eternals. And the general gist of this very long article, Stephen, is that the X-Men were, in a sense, brought to the, the, the Earth by Celestials, I believe. Yeah. They introduced an X genome into a very pri primitive version of humanity, which has it obviously evolved into humans as we know them today, buffed the mutants and the X Men. But there is a very tight knit connection because the Celestials also brought the Eternals to Earth as well, Stephen. So there's a, a, what they're saying is that this could offer an opportunity for Kevin Feige yeah. and Marvel to introduce the X Men to the MCU in a sort of a subtle little way give us a backstory before they become fully fleshed in later um, obviously phases and movies is this something you'd like to say Stephen do you yeah. think because uh, we both are looking very much forward to this Eternals movie we spoke about it yeah. and I think this would be a neat way to introduce the X-Men yeah. very subtle just with a little scene or something and it's comic book uh, obviously canon if you like yeah. so it's the, the, they're taking it from the source yeah. material Get back to Summer's Comic Con John uh, when the you know the slate was announced um, we've also got the announcement of um, X-Men or Mutants, whatever they want to call them these days, uh, and Fantastic Four uh, being uh, involved in the, you know, this universe. Um, this answers the questions that I was asking because um, I felt that uh, with the X-Men um, it was going to be... One of the more important questions was where have they been? You know, yeah. through all, all this journey from that first Iron Man film where have these mutants been? This will explain it a lot, and it does. Um, it's leading to an origins of the species, if you like, um, and where they've came from. And reading that article and what you've just said as well, John, intrigues me because um, it was something that, um, going back to layman's like ourselves, it would really um, explain how the mutants came to be, how they, um, you know, born with their abilities. Uh, we kind of skim the surface in the you know, the, the former franchise, um, you know, how they uh, adopted their skills and their, um, you know, their, um, their powers. Mm -hmm. So this um, goes a bit deeper, um, how they came to be. And um, it's a good way of conditioning the audience as well. Um, because I think um, it's going to be a long time before we see a full-blown X-Men film. I think the studio have all, all 
already confirmed it's going to be a long way off. I, yeah, think we're I going don't to get... think it'll even be in Phase 5. No, I think, I think Fantastic be Four's going to be before yeah. that as well, John. And we've um, still got Captain Marvel. Yeah. Obviously, Black Panther 2 and Doctor whatnot. Strange, still, yeah, so Doctor Strange, yeah. There's a lot to cover before that, and this is a good time to start introducing, um, you know, perhaps um, we're going to see um, little sort of Easter eggs throughout the films that you might not notice, notice at first, but once we do finally get that first X-Men film, it'll all become clear. Stephen, that's one of the great things about the Infinity Saga that I love, the fact that you could go back and see all these array of different little Easter eggs that are obviously going to tie into the Shang-Chi movie. I can't recall yeah. what the name of the organisation yeah. is. I should know it's part of the title. But you can go back to the Iron Man movies and there's the a little golden, thing. Um, the Seven Chains, or something yeah. Chains, I think, or something like that. Yeah, I can't remember. Terrible that I can't recall yeah. that, but as you know, I have a merit times with things like that. But there's an array of little Easter eggs within there, and that's something that I've always enjoyed about the MCU, and I'd love to see them continue that further forward into new phases. Yeah. But the other thing that I love about this concept is the fact that it does maybe usher in a new era for the X-Men movies. A lot of people have argued that Fox's handling of the X-Men, it gave us a lot of good mutant movies, but it never gave us an out-and-out X-Men movie. No. The origins and just what makes them tick. We had a lot of action movies focusing in on their yeah, unique we abilities. Of, we walked in and this would be a better way. when they were already, uh, yeah. uh, you know, existed and they were established. So I can understand um, where people are coming from. Um, but at that time as well, John, comic book films weren't doing so well. No. Um, you couldn't really... Gamble, you know, and have an origins film from the kickoff with especially comic book films, especially X Men films as well, um, because they weren't really rolling off the tongue for your layman sort of, you know, superhero yeah. uh, movie fans out there. Um, you were all, you, for a kickoff uh, Iron Man for a start. Um, I wouldn't have started with that, but how wrong was I? Yeah, Stephen, I think you're absolutely right in what you've said about why they chose that direction for the X Men. A franchise, if you like, they wouldn't. They were never really able to give us an, an in-depth origin story, or perhaps just show us what the X-Men were as this all-encompassing sort of a yeah. thing, where it came from, if you like, without dig myself a hole. Because they had to really jump in and get things ticking along instantaneously. They needed a an instant success, Fox. So they never had that luxury, which the MCU now has. It has so many different properties, characters that they can make this a real slow burn process of introducing them and make it a rich process, tapping into all of those beautiful stories I mentioned previously that are there for 70, 50, 60 years worth of stories. Yeah. Final thing I would add, Stephen, that it's making it really interesting and perhaps getting the anticipatory juices, as I like to say, flowing, is what they say, this could be perhaps the what they did in Infinity Saga with the Guardians of the Galaxy coming in, uh, there has Guardians coming in obviously for Loki, with the more human Earthbound characters of Iron Man and Steve Rogers and Natasha Romanoff and Clint Barton, the way it all mixed together into a great big melting pot, if you'd like, and it was yeah. all very different. Uh, feel you'd cosmic and you'd non cosmic. We could do this here with the X Men, we could have it yeah. mixing with the Eternals, the Deviants, the Celestials, and have it all coming into this great big melting pot. We could have all these great characters, the As Guardians of the Galaxy, if you'd like, these Celestials and all of that coming together in the new phase, in this new saga, if you'd like. And yeah. That gets me very excited indeed to follow yeah. the future and where we're going. Obviously, you've got Captain Marvel in there as well, Carol Danvers, who's yeah. sort of human and celestial in one. Yeah. So there is an infinite amount of opportunity here for Kevin Feige and Marvel to do a whole yeah. host of interesting things with the X-Men, with the Celestials. Fantastic Four as well, who can forget them? Yeah. And I'm very much on board and cannot wait for it. But look, Stephen, that is going to round up today's episode of, of NBA Heroes. And I'll pass it over to whoever's watching now, if indeed there is anybody watching, and ask you, what did you make of the topics we spoke about? Are you excited for this Taskmaster character in the new Black Widow movie? Is it a villain? What do you make of Martin Scorsese's comments? Does that context added another layer to it? Do you agree with us that he is havering, but we respect him nonetheless? <laughs> what do you make of this X-Men theory as well? Uh, could they be buffed? via the Eternals story or movie could we have a nice little sequence comment below and let us know what your thoughts were if you have anything to add about it like the video if you've enjoyed it subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the content and me and Stephen will be back tomorrow with another episode of MBE Movie News <laughs>